If searching for a place in the world where there is hardly any risk of catching a coronavirus, then the Blasket, an archipelago just off the coast of the country of Ireland, could be a safe bet, as no one has lived there on a permanent basis since the 1950s. To get there, the best route is, and hopefully still is post-COVID-19, is to first drive west along County Kerry's beautiful Dingle Peninsula coastline, part of Ireland's stunning Wild Atlantic Way. Once past the town of Dingle and Fentry Bay, head for Dunquin, where the islands will eventually come into view, and where one might be able to work out why Inish Tushkirt, more fondly known as the Dead Man, is named so. Keep going towards the harbour and look out for the Ferry Tours ticket office, although try not to blink, as you may miss it. Only the Great Blasket, the largest of the islands, can be visited by the general public. Apart from Inish Vicolorn, which was once famously owned by the late Taoiseach Charles Hawhey, the other islands are either protected nature reserves or just too dangerous to reach by sea. Even on a calm day like this one, the Blasket Sound is one of the most treacherous waterways surrounding Ireland. This was famously demonstrated in the 16th century, when a handful of ships from the Spanish Armada attempted to moor here after the fleet's crashing defeat under England's Elizabeth I. The riptides and reefs proved a real challenge for the vessels, and most notably the mighty Santa Maria Dolorosa consequently sank here, bringing all but one of its 297 strong crew down with it. Even today, trying to set foot on the Great Blasket from the mainland presents its challenges. Ferry trips are dependent on the time of year, the weather, and now world pandemics. On approaching the island, first-time visitors may start to wonder how on earth, or rather how on the island, the boat is actually going to get to shore to let one embark. It soon becomes apparent that it won't be and instead passengers transfer onto dinghies that whiz them towards the island's jetty. Those wearing walking boots will no doubt breathe a sigh of relief on first sight of the steep and rocky walkway up from the shore. Those who are not wearing good footwear can only hold their breath and hope for the best. Although many would relish the remoteness and isolation of the islands, especially during these COVID-19 times, this seemingly idyllic lifestyle was not easy for those that actually lived here. No permanent teacher, priest or doctor. And particularly during the winter months, the islands could be completely cut off from the mainland for weeks at a time due to the weather, putting a strain on already limited food supplies, not to mention mental health. The lure of a better life in America enticed many of the younger islanders to emigrate, vastly ageing and reducing the population of 176 at its peak in 1916 to just over 20 in less than 40 years. In 1953, the Irish government finally decided to relocate the remaining islanders to the mainland for their safety, and the islands were left to the wildlife that has thrived here ever since. Yet this unique chapter in Irish history was not lost forever. Visiting scholars to the Blaskets around the turn of the 20th century encouraged the islanders to document their life experiences, and the islanders didn't disappoint. Their collection of stories and biographies created an impressive legacy of critically acclaimed Irish literature, as well as a precious record of a now extinct life. Island Cross Talk and the Islandman were written by native Thomas O'Crohan. His house still stands intact on the Great Blasket today, although the interior, as admitted by one of the island tour guides, would not have been quite so polished as this in a Crohan's time. Undoubtedly the most famous work to come out of the islands is the autobiography of Peg Sayers. Although not born on the island, Sayers moved to the Great Blasket from Dunquin when she was 19 after marrying an island fisherman. Visitors worldwide flocked to the island primarily due to Peg Sayers. 
but with visits to the island limited to only three hours per person to prevent it being overwhelmed, visitors should try and tear themselves away from Peg's house and accompanying coffee shop and explore more of the island. Granted, even the fittest of hikers may struggle to complete the island's perimeter in the time allocated, but one can still enjoy a large part of the natural wild beauty, as well as some stunning views across to the other islands, where one might spot a circus of puffins or a herd of seals. But if out of luck, then the resident sheep here on the Great Blasket are a fine consolation. And just in case an argument ensues en route, this, excuse my Gaelic, is the island of Tiruk, and not as some may insist, is Skellig Michael, also found close to the Kerry coastline and of similar appearance, but definitely not this. Should one's company not be convinced of this at the time, placate them by taking full advantage of the rather humorous selfie opportunity the island creates by resembling a pointy hat or a certain emoji. Lovely.